Hi everyone, this is Peyton Hatch with Kuko Inc. And again, today I'm going to show you how to monitor a concrete pour or a concrete slab um, and, and compare it against a design build. So I'm going to show you first, you know, kind of what our end product is going to be and then how we got there. So we are hoping to be able to generate a, a report essentially that looks like this, a comparison report which will give us the, uh, let me go see here, open this up. Essentially give us a deviation and a, and a uh, just comparison report uh, results. So standard deviation, minimum, maximum values, where most of our points sat within the values, within tolerance. And as you can see, this pour did fall pretty much right in the tolerances. And yeah, so this video will show you how to generate these reports, kind of the processes and the, the equipment that was used to create these reports. So I'll close out of that. All right, so let me turn off the map for now. And you see, we have a whole bunch of points that were shot in an area that is going to be, that was recently poured. And we got this data from a TS-16. You see here are the points that were shot. And the application that was used was the measure plane and grid application. And I did the um, grid on a surface. So it basically just boxed out an area, scanned it. Uh, you can use grid on a surface or measure to a, measure to a plane, specify corners, and it shoots points relative to the plane. And the instruments will essentially go through and take shots on an on a, on a interval that you set, say foot by a foot, two feet by two feet. And that is essentially how we got all these points here. Now, what are we comparing it against? Now, we've uploaded a CAD model into our Infinity. And now, this CAD model gave me a few little troubles. We'll just, I'll show you here. We'll click on it, do the inspection on it. But this CAD model was a, a quad mesh, so I wasn't able to explode it and tell it to extract just the points that I wanted. Uh, essentially, if I were to go here to my Features tab and say, hey, give me all the points for this, because I can't grab the individual components because it is technically a quad mesh out of CAD, it created coordinates at everywhere, not just in the vicinity I wanted. So had this been exploded, I would have been able to grab, say, just this line or just this line here and brought those in and used as a surface. So what I did is I, was, I went in and I manually extracted the points. I went in here and I hit new point, and I knew essentially the boundaries that I was supposed to be, so right here, and I would just, I'd just click. So I'll just do a random one right now to show you. I'll just click right here, and it grabs the, the corner, the geometry there. I can give it a name, give it a code, and I just hit create. And that's how I went in and I created essentially the boundaries of this surface, and they are right here off my CAD model and you see this was the boundary of the floor of the pour at least the surface that represented the area of our pour right here and I can go in like I said here this will shade it a little better representation of what the, uh, the surface looked like and see there's a little bit of a, a crown in this surface Turn off our points yeah we have a little bit of a crown in it there we go bring this back down now we'll bring our data back in, our points. So there's a couple different ways to run the comparison report from these, from this data. I could do it off of the individual points. I feel it's better to use a surface model. So I'll go ahead and turn off this surface. And I know that the points I want to use, I'll start with scan on them. So I would go to my inspector tab. And I would just type in SC for scan, and here are all the points that have a the SC in the beginning of it. Go all the way around the bottom. So I'll hold down shift, I will grab all the points, I will go here to my surfaces, and I will create a new 2.5D sur surface. So Infinity will have surfaces that will say climb up the, the walls, because um, it, it can do full 3D meshes. 
and we don't want that. This is a concrete floor. We want everything to be in, in essentially in 2D or 2.5D, so we'll go there. And we now have a new surface created right here, Tier 1 STG. I want to rename this. This will be called Measured. I already have a measured surface. Clearly, I've been practicing this. So I'll just call this one Measured 2. Get the information, 637 points. How many triangles were created? And I will hit Apply. All right. If I go back to my 3D viewer, you can see now I've actually got a nice triangulation, a nice surface model of my scanned points from my TS-16. And this also works with MS-60 data or really any, any type of data. I can take individual shots on this, but this, this particular application, this measure plane and a grid application inside the Captivate creates very uniform data and great for these type of reports. So I now have a measured surface and I have a comparison surface that I can compare this against. So here's how easy it is to generate these reports. Under our surfaces tab, we have a comparison map option. So I hit comparison map. What is my reference type? The reference type, here are all of your options. You see we have quite a few. You can do point clouds. You can essentially go out and scan something one day, come back the next day and scan it again and use the first day's cloud as your reference and compare it. Planes, IFC models, areas, closed lines, you can bring in DXF files or even create your own DXF files. We are going to use a surface, and it is the, the surface right here, the tier one. I can click this button right here. If it's already selected, I can click this button right here, and it will populate that in. Or I can click on the pencil mark and go through my list. Either way, doesn't matter. It's the same thing. And then for this surface, what is my measured surface? Measure two. Okay. Now, if you remember, when I rotated this over, there was a crown in this surface. So we don't want to base our report strictly off of along the height axis. And then you wouldn't be able to get a, a, an accurate report because there is some slope to this. Now, this is great if, the, if you're going against a perfectly flat plane. Um, but we, there is some slope to this. So I want to make it perpendicular. And I want to ignore any data. So if I had data that was, say, clear over here, I did a big scan and I had lots of data on here, I could tell ignore anything beyond a certain range, so I would do one foot. Anything beyond a foot, I don't even want it to be used in this report. And not really that big a deal in this particular instance because all my data is right on the plane. Like I say, if you're doing scan data and stuff gets in the way, you want to ignore that data. Color mode, leave a standard, and our ramping. I want to go with a, uh, I like, oh, we're actually going to just edit our own, so we'll go in right here. I don't want five steps. We're going to add a few extra steps to this, so extra color maps. And you can see here's our, here's the different color schemes. So red is going to be the absolute worst down here, and then the absolute bottom, I will make it blue. I shouldn't have any. I've got 0 to 0.33, and so you can set these to whatever are the tolerances of your site. So you can tighten them up or even, or even loosen them. Um, and I want everything that's within tolerance to be green. So, of course, right at the 0 mark, I want to make it green. Because I'm really looking for just, say, a pass or a fail. Now, I, I could, of course, make these a different shade of green so I can see where we're starting to deviate out. But honestly, I'm really just looking for a pass and fail based off of the tolerances of my project. Uh, but when I get a little bit outside of the tolerances, I want to know where I want to have a little bit less that I need to move. Okay. And I will now hit Create. We will have a map now. So I can't see it because I've got my reference surface highlighted. So I'll just go click on something different, press Escape. And now you'll see um, everything's colored differently. Um, I will turn off this map. You know, I'll even go turn off my points. I don't need the points there. I want just the surface. So as you can see, almost everything in this pour is in green. Pretty much the entire thing met, met specifications. 
I got a little area right here. Now I know this spot was going to be out. I happen to know for a fact there was a pillar right here. They didn't do a very good job of getting out the data. Um, so we have all reports. There's our comparison map too. I could rename it. You know, this is poor, whatever it is, poor, poor two, and I can give it the date and time in the name or the date and time is listed right here. And just hit apply. All right, now I have poor two. I can right click on poor two and get the comparison map report. Here is our report. So, for two, there is your your heat map. I don't want. It's not really called a heat map, but it's a it's a, it's a deviation map with your scale off to the side, with the negative and the positive. I'd say almost this entire thing fell within spec. And right here is just um, just all the information you might need. Standard deviation, pretty much all the points off percentage are right within tolerances. Like I say, just all the information about the different surfaces that were used to, to do this inspection. Ah, so we'd save the report. We'll call it billing X, we'll just say, well, um, I'll just call this comparison report two, so I already have one, export. Close out of this. Now down here, under my reports, as you can see, I have comparison map report two, so I can bring it back up. I like to just right click and go open in containing folder, because then I actually see where it went. And if I double click it here, see it's just a PDF. Then it opens up in my, in my PDF viewer that I, that I like with the computer, not just the infinity PDF viewer. So you can make additional edits to it. So this is, uh, say, just a comparison report. I think it's extremely powerful. And it's a great way to QC your pores or just any type of design. And uh, quite literally, this can be done while the concrete's still wet. Uh, we actually did this in the field with the inspect surface application in the Captivate. And then, let's see if I got that app right here. I don't have it on here. But if you use the inspect surface application here inside of the controller, you can generate this same map uh, out in the field. So I say I was just showing you the infinity way of, of creating those reports. So once again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And I, I look forward to helping any way that I can. So thank you.